Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are here to talk sister wives. Yes, boo. Logan had a wedding. Uh-huh. It was awkward turtle. Unfortunately. Very bittersweet, according to Janelle. Mm-hmm. We're going to get into all that and so much more. But before we do, we must issue you a disclaimer, please. Hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. We have stupid opinions and we're not going to apologize for it. No. So if you're so sorry, you may want to find yourself another dumpster, baby. But if you're down to party and talk about the Browns, welcome to this dumpster. Yeah, and if you are down to party with us, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. We have so much good content up on there. And if you're watching on YouTube, please, 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 please do not forget to like please. and comment and share and subscribe. Even if you just comment a little emoji please. or if you just copy the link to share it, all of that helps us in the algorithm, we're trying to get to 4,000. Can you oh help God. a couple of fat raccoons out? It's such a slow crawl. God. We're at 3.77 right now. Oh, my God. But I'm like... Got out we... of the 3.5 stuff. I know. That's nice. But can we get to 4,000? If you could help with that, we would be very appreciative. Thank you. Thank you in advance. Appreciate it. Now, I did hear that Maddie is pregnant for the fourth time. Yeah, I can't wait to see that in 2027. Yeah. <laughs> Are we going to be able to watch her home birth, do you think? Oh my God, I really don't want yeah, to. Yeah, I'm sick of the birthing uh, stuff. Me too. I didn't need any of the McKelty footage. No. I just, for the record, I never need any McKelty footage. Mm -mm. But yeah, I, I don't care to see it. But I am happy for her. Yeah, me too. That's great. It's yeah. growing family. It's lovely for you. Great. Fantastic. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into it season 19 episode 3 entitled am i my brother's keeper i don't get it i don't know what that's in reference what to what does that mean i wonder if that was a scene that was cut in the editing and they just forgot to change the title well this is logan's wedding is that the brother in question well we don't even know. i mean we know it's logan's wedding but right. nobody's saying it's actually logan's wedding it's just this mysterious event that everybody had to go to. It was a wedding. With a family, bride and a groom. With a bride and a groom. So we all assume it's Logan's wedding. But yeah, they're not saying it because the person doesn't want to be public, which is fine. Yeah, but they're still saying it. I mean, and hmm. once again, they know that this fandom knows every single thing about the Brown Every single thing family yeah and so we already know that logan got married to michelle in october of 2022 i had to go back and look because i'm thinking to myself wait a minute did that happen in 2023 mm. are we moving the timeline forward the answer is no nope october of 2022 is when they got married and furthermore logan and michelle asked that no cameras would be there and that the family generally did not discuss the wedding and yet they still did yeah We've got like 20 full minutes Ugh. of going to the wedding, talking about the wedding without naming Logan and Michelle, and then downloading after the wedding and how it all went. I'm like, the family themselves should know better than to do that. Yeah. I'm actually kind of surprised at Janelle specifically. Mm -hmm. Like if Janelle's son says, mom, I don't want y'all to talk about me. Why are you filming yourself after the wedding talking about it? And talking about how awkward and bittersweet and weird it was and Cody being like, yeah, I didn't even want to go at first. I'm like, how terrible would it be to be mm. Logan watching this and being like, oh, that's what my family felt on the day of my wedding, the happiest day of my life. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. I would regret inviting them. Yes, me as well. Like, I can't believe that all of these adults couldn't just set aside their bullshit for one day for a couple of hours yet all of you had to be weird and awkward mm -hmm. nobody Nervous. could be friendly and cordial can't sit with each other gotta sit on oh the opposite God. aisle so pathetic very pathetic so frustrating yeah i mean I think Janelle's trying to let us know that, I mean, she did the best that she could and that it was definitely a strange vibe. Mm -hmm. Like she saw Mary and she nodded to Mary and maybe said a hi or a goodbye, but like nobody really talked to Mary. Yeah. Christine wasn't going to talk to Mary. I'm starting to feel really badly for Mary. Me too. 
And she's taking it like a champ. Yeah. Like on the couch, she's like, yeah, you know, there's some folks in the family that don't want to speak to me or hang out with me. And so I just gravitate toward the people who do want to be in my presence. Yikes. Which is a very mature outlook, but it's also, it's got to hurt. It's sad, actually, because we look at all of these Rewind episodes and all of the family was like together and dealing with each other, even though they probably didn't like each other completely, but like they were still trying to be a family. And now here we are in 2022 and you guys still can't like put aside your crap for your your child Mm -hmm. who didn't ask for any of this. No, and like, this is the child, arguably, you probably owe the most to. Uh Uh-huh. This is the child that did most of the back-breaking work of parenting all these children. Like, the least you could have done is set your shit aside, Mm -hmm. show up, put on a happy face, dance around like a crazy person, Cody, smile, Janelle, and just let it be good for them. Yikes. See, like, I give my family a lot of crap, you know, I talk about my family a lot on the podcast, but... Like, just a personal story. We'll just go uncensored. Let's go uncensored. We'll just go uncensored for it. Well, let's come back from uncensored. By the way, if you want access to all the uncensored bits, you got to subscribe to us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash realitytvcringe. We'd love to have you. There's a lot of great content. But yeah, I don't know why um, it had to be that awkward. Except, again, when you go back to the timeline, I believe Christine left Cody in September. Like, that's when she packed up her house and she left. She told him before that Mm -hmm. that it was going to happen. She was having conversations, but she didn't actually skedaddle until September 2022, I believe. And so this is just one month after that. I guess. And I can see how Christine would be nervous, Mm -hmm. which she does tell the camera that she is. Yeah, sure. I can see how Janelle is also like not necessarily looking forward to it although at this point please keep in mind Janelle hasn't even had Christmas with Cody and that big fucking argument that was December 2022 yeah yeah yeah. so with Janelle at Logan's weddings things are still kind of in the air Mm -hmm. so it's interesting to kind of get a snapshot of how she was really feeling at the time yeah but Overall, I think the kids probably had a good time. Sure. I found it very strange, Beatrice, that Cody said that his family was trying to pretend that they were having such a great time just to make him feel bad. That's like a glimpse into the mind of a narcissist. No, seriously. Like, how could you take that personally that your family's trying to have fun at an event for Logan? Like, they are trying to have fun for him because this is a terrible thing. Like, the whole family is broken up. Cody is wild. Mm -hmm. And then Robin being like, yeah, some of the family came up to me. I got an I love you from Gabe, so that was good. And I embraced him. Mm -hmm. But some of the others didn't want anything to do with me. Victim. Very much so victim. And again, Logan's wedding. This is even before the Christmas chat. Oh, my God. This is before the Christmas chat, right? right? I believe it's before the Christmas chat. So, like, all of those things haven't really even happened yet. Wow. Yes. So, yet, Cody and Robin are still acting like this. Still acting like victims. Wow. And the way Robin was phrasing it in her victimology was still like she was wondering who was going to come forward and kiss the ring. Like, who's going to come forward and tell me that they love me or they're Mm -hmm. happy to see me? It's all about... Her. Yeah. Now, I don't know if Brianna and Aurora and Dayton went. I don't know if Solinari went. Robin does kind of address that a little bit with the little ones. Like, she doesn't necessarily want to get them involved in the family drama. So that's what's making her nervous about the wedding. Well, yeah, they were saying that in the context of Cody going back and forth between whether or not he wanted to go where he was like i don't want to be there and then robin's like yeah i don't know if i want to be there because i don't want to put sol and ari through that and i'm like oh shut up i don't even think they went though yeah and they're kids and they don't care i don't know if aurora i think aurora and brian i think the older ones did go if i recall correctly i could be wrong though mm, and i'm sure they didn't interact with anybody probably and then not freaked out in the Christmas chat being like, you guys don't love us. Right, uh, because it was an awkward vibe at the wedding. Yeah. And nobody got together for that Thanksgiving. Yeah. And you also stole our dad. Like, yeah. that's what I would think Facts. if I was a sibling. I mean, and I'm having an actual reaction to that and I'm entitled to it. Yeah, sorry. But, but Brianna and Aurora, I don't know about Dayton because he's never really in a lot of these scenes. No, he's not, for he's not some talked reason. about either. He's, no, he's not talked about. But I think Aurora and Brianna are absolutely brainwashed. Oh, yeah. 100%. And have been programmed to feel this way. And I'm just wondering about a mother who would feel the need to make her children feel badly about a family that I think actually loves them. Oh, yeah. 
I don't know why she's like that. Maybe it's projection, though, because nobody likes Robin. Because you stole Cody away. Like, that's the whole root of it. So then now you're going to brainwash your kids and think and make them think everybody hates them just to isolate them even further. Mm -hmm. So you have your own perfect little family. Yes. It's like that picture she created with Christine's kids and everything. And yeah. all. like it's that manifested manifested mm -hmm. she's created her own family where it's always just been her and cody and mm -hmm. their kids and mm -hmm. that's it nobody else exists right and as janelle speaks about it she's like as soon as robin came into the family there was just a separateness yeah she just didn't parent the way that christine and i parented and we'll get there when we get there but it's always kind of been that way with robin and she just doesn't understand that she contributed to the majority of the downfall of these relationships. She cannot see it. The bold-faced lying. The it's like, so weird Of to course me. I wouldn't let Cody not visit the other wives and their kids when that's exactly what she did. Yeah. When we're talking in the last season about the calendar and the schedule and how often Cody was actually there and he was only there from um, sundown to sun up over one night. Like, Robin, you know this consciously that this is what happened. Yeah. But you're lying to us crazy it's so crazy wild crazy making when she was saying that about um solinari and she was like yeah i've never used the kids as an excuse for him to not see the wives i'm like what are you talking about that was literally what was it last season or the season mm -hmm. before where she was like no ari needs her dad yes i mean there was when cody was moving Mary into the B&B &B that she has and right. like he couldn't be gone for very long. There was also Isabel's surgery like he couldn't go because yep. of COVID and also he can't be he can't be away from Ari that long. So those two right there off the top of my old head. Yeah, I remember how you absolutely limit the amount of time that Cody can spend with his family. Exactly. And then she's still lying about it. I just it's mind boggling to me but then when we get to the jenga scene and she looks so fucking unhappy she's so dour oh my god she's so morose so i'm like what is it like are you just miserable and lying and covering up for cody because you feel like you have to like is this like a battered wife type situation or are you just like a miserable person and you're just lying so that way you can get through all of this hatred and shit the show can get canceled and you can be on with your life or the alternative do you want to appear like you're unhappy and appear like you're depressed and appear appear like you're missing your other children and the other wives so that people will have some sympathy and compassion for you. Right. I think it's actually that. I don't think she feels that. I don't think she wants those kids around. I don't think she wants them eating out of her fridge. I don't think she wants to have to compete with the other wives. I think she's very happy to have Cody all to herself, but yeah. she feels she needs to project this depression so that people feel like she has feelings she doesn't no she really doesn't she does not but she does look unhappy with cody yes. though like i can't imagine that you're actually happy with cody brown mm -hmm. you know what i mean like how how happy is your marriage with this angry punitive balding man <laughs> <laughs> i mean really i think she was really conscious of the cameras too because i was watching her constantly look to the side to check where the cameras were and so she was always aware of like what kind of expression she was holding yeah so i don't i don't trust anything out of her at all me neither he's like not at that level to me like he doesn't necessarily really care what he says who right. he hurts in a moment whereas robin is very careful about what she projects to the public because yeah. she knows that we're judging her even, Cody doesn't give a fuck. Well, and even though she's like, she's not even that careful because she lies so much yep. and she catches, her, she's not catching herself in these lies. Like if you're this fucking smart, you should have your lies straight, mm -hmm. girl, mm -hmm. but you can't even do that. You're just talking over yourself in season 19 and season 18. It's like, it's crazy to me. Well, sometimes you lie so much that you start to believe your own lies. Mm. Maybe that's where she is with it. I could see Or that. maybe she just thinks if she lies enough, people will start to believe her. Oh. Not this group, honey. Not no. these raccoons. Not this no, audience. We've been following since season one. We have been following your family. We've seen the footage of you kicking the dog, bitch. Oh, my God. We've seen all the things that you have done. And the fridge stuff, like not letting the kids yes. eat out of the fridge. I love that Janelle called that Me out. too. Oh, my God. That was so good. Because we've been talking about it for years. Yes, we have. And so then we have the next scene where Cody's kind of talking about his relationship with Mary. And he's like, I think it's over with now. Okay. Let's stop right there. <laughs> Right? Because 
this is the perfect example yes. of what caused Mary the confusion for all of these years because we've already had the conversation out on Coyote Pass at the picnic table. Mm -hmm. We've with very much a lot of clarity, we've said like it's never going to work. Yep, it's never ever going to happen. And Mary made the decision to walk away as well. And I don't know how many months have passed since then. I want to say at least half a year, if not longer. Mm -hmm. And you're doing the same shit again. Yep. I think we're broken up. Like, what the fuck do you mean? I don't understand. And then he will acknowledge that he has been going back and forth. He's like, I understand that Mary's confused. Like, I get it. But, you know, I mean, it's been over with for years. It's like, okay, so what is it then? He, d he doesn't know. He talks out of both sides of his mouth. Oh. He's, he's insufferable. It's so frustrating. I mean, but Mary has to take a responsibility for her choice to stay in an unclear situation without any intimacy or communication for as long as she did. That's on her. Right. But you can kind of see how a woman of faith who wants to keep her family together mm -hmm. would be confused by somebody who vacillates as much as Cody Brown does. Of course. But like, as soon as you see the footage, though... The same things we saw, we see with him sitting on the couch and yeah. how, how he speaks of her. Like, I could never date her. Right. Like, if I was single right now, I would not have anything to do with her. That's so This nasty. is an unkind thing to say that you don't need to actually voice. Like, why does he say that? Why does he feel the need to say shit like that? At the same time, you're bitching about how your wives, your ex-wives, are talking so much shit about you and villainizing you to everybody and to your children. And then you say this crap about mm -hmm. them on tv if i was single and mary was single i would never date her and you wonder why the kids have a hard time with you because you're talking about their mothers hello who they love yeah and who love them i mean it's not it's not a mystery why yeah. this is happening to you but he's still asking the question what have i done wrong yeah Jesus, i don't know crackers so crazy and then he also has to say that he thinks that him and janelle could reconcile mm -hmm. <laughs> which i'm like is crazy he right. says this on the couch so this is after the whole christmas conversation i imagine i'm assuming i don't know because I we can't get current i day. personally think based on his balding <laughs> we're looking at a cody in these scenes from like late 2023 or spring of 2024 like a more recent cody so yeah then so he's got some time away from the christmas argument mm -hmm. and being told to go fuck himself and he's realizing what he's losing. Mm -hmm. He's probably starting to come to terms if it's 2024, baby. Yeah. He's coming to terms with the fact that he's going to have to sell his house, that he doesn't have Janelle's money. So maybe that's why he sees a world where they can reconcile. Yeah. But Janelle doesn't want any part of it. She doesn't think she will ever have to see him again after Logan's wedding. Right. Which is crazy. That's why I want her to get her whole, I don't know, annulment or whatever the fuck you call it, release mm -hmm. from the Mormon church. I'm like, get released from this dude so you don't have to spend eternity with him on Kolob, if that's well, what you believe. Well, they weren't going to do that anyway, though. You and I know that, right? What? <laughs> They're not going to Kolob. That's well, not yeah, real. I mean, yeah. But like, but if you believe that, I guess. If you're still believing in the faith. Uh, well, but like last week, you said that a Mormon woman who was sealed to one man could leave that man and go to another man and get sealed to a second man and a third or a fourth man. So maybe she can bounce around among the planets. Well, I'm going to fly to this guy's planet for a little while. <laughs> Cody, I'll check you out later. Well, Ethel did correct me on that. She's okay. like, actually, it's wrong. <laughs> She's okay. like, you can marry other people. You are only sealed to one person. Okay, so you can't have multiple sealings. No. So <laughs> Unless you, know. you get unsealed, I think, and then maybe get resealed. Right. Watch Ethel text me and be like, no, it's still wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I bet if she if she gets unsealed to Cody, then she can seal to somebody else, which then so, yeah. would be the incentive because she is still open to polygamy. Why? The incentive to get that release would be so that she can move on into another relationship. She's just not there yet. Yeah. And doesn't want to. But honey, you don't want to die sealed to Cody Brown. I mean, that sounds like real. an awful chaotic planet that sounds you don't want to be on. Yeah. <laughs> Good grief. I don't get it. And then we have the scene in Robin and Cody's house, which I was surprised we were in the house this time, where their family is playing Jenga on mm -hmm, the floor, mm -hmm. eating caramel apples from the QVC, and they look miserable. But did you look at those caramel apples? Because it looked like she cut the she cut just down to the core yeah. and put like a stick in it. I'm like, yeah. who eats the core I don't know. of an apple? Unless I'm missing something, but I did stop it and look very closely, and I thought I saw apple seeds in the core. Uh-huh. 
bizarre. She's very weird. I think she bought them from QVC or something and was like, oh, look at us. We're having caramel apples and playing Jenga. We're a happy family. Well, when you compare and contrast the vibe Vibe of the Jenga party with, uh, for example, last week when Christine's kids and Hunter are all at the table and Peyton waltzes in and talks about working at a strip club, like the energy is so different it's so weird and forced and uh, was it aurora i can Mm -hmm. never tell them apart because i don't really care about them but aurora is like trying to act all Mm happy-go-lucky and teasing cody and poor little um ari is trying to have fun playing jenga because she's just a child Mm -hmm. she's just a little kid stuck in this terrible family and then robin just staring all weird yeah, like, like that. a goblin <laughs> like, robin <laughs> robin like the, the worst goblin angle. is this a section where we get cody talking about ari yes saying that she hates christine yeah and the way cody tells it like he immediately sets about to correct her like we're not supposed sure. to hate our mothers and she's like well but christine left daddy so i hate christine and then cody When you think it can't get any worse, Uh he says something along the lines of, and that's a type of loyalty because that's all he wants. Fucking Delulu. Even if it's from a five-year-old or a six-year-old child who still has a pacifier. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That loyalty is enough for him. And he uses that kind of as a launching pad to to then talk about the other older, potentially adult children and how they also feel the same kind of loyalty to their mom. Yeah. Yeah. But all I was thinking when I was hearing him recount this was like, you guys are talking mad shit about Christine Uh in your house because that's the only way that Ari would say something. And that also goes for when they went to say goodbye to Christine, that really awkward goodbye that McKelty forced last season. And Ari starts talking about just kiss daddy. Yep. You guys should date again or whatever she said. That's coming from inside the house. The call is coming from inside the house. Oh, for sure. She's only repeating what she's hearing all the time. But then Cody wants us to think that the wives are just talking so much shit about him. And he's actually not that bad of a guy. He didn't do anything wrong. He he did all that he could. He was intimate with these wives. He was romantic with them. Like, I spent all my time with them. Okay, dude. Mm -hmm. When you're talking mad shit about the wives in front of these kids who also Robin is talking about how they don't know their siblings. They don't know that the family's broken up. Saul and Ari, they're uh, apparently unaware of the situation at hand. And Robin doesn't talk about the other family in front of the kids because she doesn't want to hurt their feelings. But that's just another way of separating Mm -hmm. her kids from everybody else. Well, she doesn't want her kids to start asking questions. Because if they're keeping the spirit and the names of the siblings in the house, then of course, Saul and Ari are going to start wondering, well, where are they? Mm -hmm. And Robin even says, they're going to wonder, like, why aren't they over at our house? Why aren't they over at my birthday party? And every example that she gave was... The kids coming to them. Uh The same question could be asked of you, Robin. Why aren't you taking your kids over to see Garrison or to see Savannah? They live in the same time town or over to see Gabe or have some sort of a lunch with those siblings. Why aren't you organizing those types of things? Why does everybody got to come over to your house? Exactly. And that's what I was talking about a couple episodes ago, like with Cody and Robin's philosophy on it's 50-50. Relationships go two ways. But you're not doing anything. You're not making any effort with anybody in the family. So it, what you're really saying is that everybody has to come to you. Everybody mm-hmm. has to come cap in hand and show their loyalty to Cody Brown's right. clan or whatever, his club mm-hmm. that he has in order for him to give his love and his respect to his family. It's wild. It's not how it works. No. And so consequently, what Robin is doing is she is... Allowing the children to forget that they even have siblings. Exactly. Yes. Further entrenching the separation between your family and everybody else. Like there are things you could be doing right now to cultivate relationships outside of marriages. Like yeah. Janelle doesn't need to be married to Cody for you to have a relationship with her kids. And she even says in this episode, like, you know, McKelty should have a relationship with Robin. Sure. Any of the kids who want to have a relationship with Cody and Robin, that is exactly what they should be able to do. And she supports it. But we know it's not happening because not even Cody and not even Robin want it. They're not trying to do that. Yep. 
Robin gives me the typical like stepmom vibe of like, I married your dad, so you should accept me no matter what, even though I'm going to be a total bitch. I'm not going to act like I like you at all. And I'm not going to make any effort to make you a part of my family. But if you show any kind of resistance to that or criticism to that then i'm going to vilify you Mm -hmm. like that's like the mentality that robin has by victimizing myself exactly Mm -hmm. yes i hate it yes pisses me off so much like when gwen was talking about how she was a young girl she was in robin's minivan robin was pregnant with must have been ari and gwen makes a childish comment like oh wow we're gonna have a a sibling, a blood sibling or something like that. And Robin has such a huge response, got super wounded and hurt by it and made it all about her when Gwen was just saying something that a kid would say. Of course. It doesn't need to be all that. Right. But that's what Robin does. She catastrophizes. Yeah. And how are you going to get offended by a child saying something stupid? Like that's how children are. Mm -hmm. Like how are you going to be as a a grown ass adult? It's not even stupid. It's facts. Yeah. You could take a moment and take some some time to like explain the situation and maybe reframe that for her because she's a child. Exactly. But no, you're going to get offended. You're going to become the victim. And this is going to perpetuate your claim that they were never accepted into the family. Exactly. When it was just an innocent comment. Yep. That you could have parented. Oh, yeah. But then... Janelle calls that out and says that Cody and Robin totally mismanaged how they handled I love their it. kids. And I'm like, please give me more of this this season yes. because that is so honest and so true because they didn't parent the kids in a way where they could mesh the whole family mm-hmm. together. They made that separateness. They made it all the other kids feel like they were othered. And now you have this huge fucking mess but miss me with this whole robin i'm depressed i'm going through a season of depression and it's really hard with her fake tears yeah eating caramel apples yes absolutely now i was watching red lipstick reality tv Mm -hmm. which by the way is on youtube love the channel you Mm -hmm. should definitely check her out subscribe she is she's the bee's knees but she was talking about how There's nothing inherently wrong with the way that Robin parents versus somebody like Christine and somebody like Janelle. Like Janelle and Christine obviously had a much looser way that they parented. Like Janelle's kids went into Christine's kitchen, ate up all the food and vice versa. But Robin wasn't that kind of parent. Mm -hmm. And so maybe she wanted to have a little bit more of a limitation on what the kids ate or what they did in her home. And yeah, that's a little bit more stuffy, but there's nothing inherently wrong with Robin parenting that way. And I would agree with that. Hmm. I mean, personally, I think kids probably flourish more with Janelle's type of parenting. But like structure that way, like structure like Robin imposed on all of the kids isn't bad necessarily. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to advocate a little bit. I When I was watching Robin with her kids, I thought she seems to really love them. Sure. And she really loved Ace and Archer. She seemed to really care about... McKelty, I didn't feel that to be fake. Yeah, I mean, with some of the kids, but like any of the other kids, if there was any kind of resistance, like she took that personal and then never really tried to make that better. Like she's still the parent. She's still the adult. Like she should have made more of an effort with the other kids. I don't think there's anything wrong with having structure in terms of parenting either. But like she had a whole ass sign on her fridge that was like, if you want food out of here, you need to talk to Robin or Mindy or something, which to me is absolutely ridiculous, I think. Because you have this big giant family. Mm -hmm. You want everybody to be included. You have this dream, allegedly, if we're supposed to believe you, that you want all of your grandkids to be playing out on your property and you want everybody to be in and out of your house. Like you want this big giant family cohesive family but then you don't really act like that that's weird to me yeah i don't know i feel like if you have 18 kids running through your house and taking up all your resources it might be okay to put some parameters on that but i do think the appearance of that ended up being well robin doesn't want to share robin wants to hoard robin wants to keep all of these resources and we're her kids she says we're her kids and she won't let us have any like when we want it so that lent itself to the estrangement with the children i but I'm just saying fundamentally, I, 
I don't see anything really wrong with that. Like if I have a bunch of kids, I'm going to be like, no, you better ask me before you eat up all my bread now and well, eat up all my steaks and stuff. Yeah. I mean, if the resources are shared equally, but like Janelle yes. and Christine's kids were having a hard time getting food sometimes because right. Robin had all of the fucking money. And then you have this big old Flagstaff McMansion, whereas Janelle's in a rental and Christine's doing whatever the fuck she's doing. She's in an RV, baby. She's in a, You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, so of course the kids would want to come over and be like, yeah, mom, number four, can I have some food? Like Mary's got fucking nothing but bananas. Janelle's in an ah. RV. <laughs> I mean, Christine is not cooking much because she's doing all of her plexus bullshit. So, uh, like, I'm hungry. Right. You know what I mean? Where Robin's got this huge ass fridge. Yes. Oh, that's, that's all I'm saying. I'm playing there is a advocate. world, though, where all of these women could have been different in their parenting styles yes. and they still could have kept this family together. Totally. Um, and I do think that Robin's style of parenting tipped over into competitiveness and yeah. also, again, hoarding those resources, which the kids are always going to pick up on. Exactly. You can tell them you love them as much as you want, but they're going to sniff that out. Mm -hmm. And I think they did with Robin. Oh, they for sure did. And then we have McKelty and her C-section. Do we care? We, I mean, here, here's the thing. I don't care about the C-section. I don't care about her having a high heart rate. I don't care about it going down as soon as Tony <laughs> enters the room. I do not care. Um, I don't care about her seeing the children come out of her belly. I don't care mm -hmm. about McKelty. <laughs> what I cared about was the discussion around Robin and McKelty's relationship. Yeah. Because this was maybe the only time I ever heard McKelty speak where I felt moved by what she said. Yeah. And what she said was that Robin, the reason she wants Robin there when the babies are born and she wants Robin to be there to help her with the babies in those first few days was because she has a special bond with Robin and Robin made her feel seen and heard and like she was special. And Cody said that Robin's relationship with McKelty was actually a blessing for him and Christine. Yeah. Because for whatever reason at the time, him and Christine weren't appreciating who McKelty was, mm -hmm. didn't necessarily want McKelty around. It yeah. sounds like Christine was more than happy to ha ship McKelty off to go live with Robin for a period of time. Yeah. And of course, McKelty felt that. Of course. 14 or 13 or 15 years old. Yeah. I felt that. And when McKelty cried, I'm like, dang, like, so I get it. Like, McKelty does get a lot of hate for her relationship with Robin and Cody. And we've even given her some hate and for And we'll that continue too. to do so. Especially as she's an adult and she can see the situation objectively. Yes. And, like, understand what her dad and Robin did to her mom. But nevertheless, like, as a kid, I totally get that. I felt that so hard for her to be, like, so misunderstood. We've seen even some in some of the earlier seasons, like, the clashes that Christine had with not only McKelty but she was having clashes with Gwendolyn too in her mm -hmm. teens and everything and so I, I felt bad for McKelty a little bit and I, I'm glad that she has that relationship with Robin but or did or did but I mean Robin I think just weaponized that unfortunately I don't think it was like necessarily 100% healthy like I'm sure McKelty and Robin had an okay relationship but I think Robin kind of like twisted that in some way maybe over the other wives maybe over the other kids or like maybe she used that as a standard of how all of the relationships with all the other kids should have gone and that's why she doesn't have relationships with the rest of them i don't know yeah i'm not sure if she weaponized it i think um i wouldn't be surprised if she did mm -hmm. i did notice a couple of the things that she said um but more than anything else when she said something like i'm gonna be here to to take care of everything and then Christine will come and I'll pass her the baton. Like yeah. the way she phrased that. I don't know if she meant for it to come across as you. She yeah, did. she wants me to be here. She wants me to be the one to, to help her with the kids. And then whenever Christine can figure it out, Christine will come over and I, I'll get to go home. But like the way she did that, I was like, oh, you're still taking little jabs at Christine. And that's Christine's daughter. And as yep. much as you say, like, I'm never going to come between them. I totally respect Christine's position as McKelty's mom. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, I, I felt like, I think she loves it when McKelty, for example, when McKelty honored her and told her about the twins before she even told Christine. Exactly. I think she eats that up 
That's what I'm saying. Yep. Yeah, and she even made a comment too. She was like, "I was handed Archer first. Like, yes, it's always got to be like other a thing. competition." I'm like, "What is wrong with you? Mm-hmm. You were such an old lady. Like, get your shit together. You know what I mean?" Like, I don't even think she knows that she's doing it when she's doing it. I think she was trying to set up a sentimental moment, and I actually felt that from her when really? she talks about. Her holding Ace or Archer and Christine holding the other one. And then she kind of gets verklempt and she talks about like it's just two grandmas holding the babies. Like I I, I think I felt her feeling that for real (laughs) and like feeling the loss of everything that could have been if the family stayed together. But I see that you don't agree. (laughs) Yeah, I mean. I just I kind of believed that she was sad about that. But at the same time, and again, she can't help but just take the jabs and always need to position herself at the top. Right. And it'd be one thing if you were sad and you didn't, you know, contribute to the breakup of the family. Mm -hmm. But like you did and you can't acknowledge that. Right. So you still want to play this victim like you're the idiot that got left behind and you didn't see any of this coming and blah, blah, blah. Like you literally contributed to it. So and it spans so many different issues yes. like it spans finances and all the money that you hoarded and all of your investment it's it spans time with the kids right. and all of the time that your children got with Cody that all these other kids didn't get it spans the romantic relationships that Cody had with these wives that yeah. he wasn't able to upkeep or didn't want to because he started to prefer you like you have an impact in all of these different ways but you have a an inability to see that or a refusal to acknowledge. I'm not sure which it is. I think with Cody, it's an inability or a lack of capacity to even understand the shit that he's done. With Robin, my sense is she knows. She knows what she's done. And this is her campaign to try and pretend that she didn't do mm. it. That's so wild to me. Like, how can you do that, though? <laughs> like, when you're on national TV, like, I don't wicked. understand. It's super wicked. And, like, even going back to your point about all of the time that Cody had with all of her kids, like, when they were playing the stupid Jenga on the floor, Cody's talking about how he has this lovely family experience with them. And they have summers where they go to music camps. And, like, he's involved, like, very involved with all of the kids' activities. And they play music at home. And they have, like, a really lovely time. And everything's great. And I'm just like, you, all of your other kids are watching this. And looking back on their years of childhood where they didn't get to have you, like, you were gone for a lot of their adolescence time. Like, you were there in the Utah house when everything was magic. And you got to be in the same house with all of them. And so they had you there. And then when you left and you went to Vegas and then Flagstaff, like, they didn't get any of that time. You were only there when the cameras were there. That's it. Mm-hmm. And yet Cody still has the gall. Like, when Christine was saying her kids were frustrated because they saw Robin and Cody be a couple, but they didn't get to see Cody and Christine be a couple. Like, I felt that. The kids are not stupid. Mm -hmm. They can see that their parents hate each other. It's like when my parents were going to get divorced. We saw it coming years before. And my dad, like, when they sat us down and told him, told us, we're getting divorced. I was like, yeah, I figured. Thank God. Duh. You guys are terrible together. Like, Mm -hmm. please, bye. (laughs) My dad was, like, so distraught. He's like, how did you know? How could you see? I'm like, you think we're dumb? Right. Like, we can see how you guys act to each other. And then Cody's sitting there still trying to backtrack and be like, no, I was romantic with Christine. No, I was involved with the kids. Like, what? I know. I don't get it. Uh, I mean, when was the last time you actually slept with Christine, though? I mean... And with Mary, it had been years. So, like, define romantic with Christine. Right. The way Christine describes it you're showing up at like dinner time and you're leaving before coffee and you hardly even see your kids right but then you have this lovely family experience with robin and her kids and then you wonder why your adult kids or all your other kids don't want anything to do with you did you hear him say though that he was hopeful that he would fall back into fellowship with his kids yes and uh, i think what he said was like maybe after a phone call or two Like, we'll be able to get the band back together. And I'm like, after a phone call, like, you think you can just pick up a phone and say, hey, how are you doing, Gabe? And how are you doing, Hunter? He wouldn't call them. He wouldn't. Mm -hmm. But like, after a phone call and not like an uh, event where you take accountability for what you've done and and have some ownership in the destruction of this family, like, 
you don't think you're going to have to do that? No. On that phone call, though? Mm -mm. You just think you're going to call and ask about their cars or their girlfriends or what they're doing in life or their jobs and everything is going to be back to normal? It's not. No, he expects his kids to call him and say, I'm sorry, Dad. I really want to be loyal to you again and I love you. Can we have a relationship? Can I come crawling back? Please, cap in hand. Mm -hmm. Daddy. It's never going to happen, Cody. It's never going to happen. And it's bizarre that you would think that it would. No, it's so weird to me. It's so weird. I, I would love to see what he's like now after Garrison's passing. Like I've said before, like I hope that that maybe changed him a little bit for the better. Maybe that was your wake up call and you realize like, oh, fuck, I've been a piece of shit father. I need to be more involved with my kids and let this shit go so I can have a relationship with the rest of my family. But I don't think that happened. And I don't think we're going to see that because we're still in 2022. So... Let's fast forward a little bit to the tell all or to the Sukiyana interviews that are going to oh happen God. at the end of the season. Do we think that those interviews have already been conducted or do <laughs> yeah. we think you do? Do, they, do you think they were conducted before the passing of Garrison? I mean, like, I, even if so, you would think that they would have to do another series or another round of interviews after Garrison's passing. When do we think mm. that's filmed? Oh, God, I don't know. Within well, the timeline of this, the airing of the season. I mean, they said this season was going to fast forward to that time, right? Like after Garrison's passing? They said they or? were going to address it. They didn't say they were going to move through mm -hmm. the entire season so that we end at that point. I feel like it's going to be interviews from 2023 then. So are we not going to talk about Garrison with Sukiyana? I can't imagine that they would ever do that. I mean, I know this. I know TLC hates us. I know this <sighs> production company sucks ass. Yeah. But I just can't imagine that we wouldn't have a glimpse of post Garrison Cody and Robin. It will be very interesting to see what he says. But I'm just yeah. going to predict it's not going to be a lot of change. It's probably going to be really bad. It's going to be deflection. Mm-hmm. I don't know that he would outright blame the other moms or anything like that, but I, I just Ooh. I don't see him taking any ownership, even if the interview was conducted today. Yeah, I don't I don't see that at all. I don't see him being like emotional about the passing in the right way. Like I don't I don't see him being like, man, I really wish I could have said something to him. I really wish I could have talked to him again. I feel like he's gonna be really shitty i feel like he's gonna just deflect and be like yeah like i haven't talked to garrison in a few years and so this happened and this was terrible and but it's not my fault it's not my fault don't yeah. blame me yeah. i know everybody else is blaming me but it's not my fault that would just be so incredibly wild it'd be if, on par for him i mean as a parent and there's so many parents out there listening and watching like if that happened to one of us <sighs> i mean wouldn't it change you down to your dna right like, wouldn't it change the your your experience of yourself and your life wouldn't you have to go to therapy wouldn't you have to take major stock of all of your choices everything even if you didn't have anything to do with it or didn't contribute in any way wouldn't you live your life in such a way that you felt that you did yeah like so if he shows up and he is unrepentant and he has taken ownership of nothing which is like what we have seen for the past i don't know how many years it's getting so exhausting mm -hmm. but if he does that it will be incredible. Oh, my God. It, there would be no hope for him ever. Ever. He's just like the the worst human being to ever live. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, he's so terrible. He's so terrible. So back to your question about Sukiyana's interviews. I don't feel like they're going to be after Garrison's passing. I don't think they're going to give us that. Because they fucking hate us. They think we're dumb. And they think that we want to see content from two years ago. Which is so insane to me i know i know but look at what they're doing with plathville i know like i mean it's they're the ruining worst. the show but at least with plathville that happened in 2023 2024 I guess. like you're yeah, still but... somewhat current but sister wives is egregious it's bad at 2022 we're looking at something that happened and we were dealing with we were ahead in season 18 yeah we were already ahead and so yeah. we've gone back yeah it's crazy it's wild yes it but is. we're still gonna watch yes it is and maybe they'll fast forward it but i just i have absolutely no confidence in this production team at all yeah me neither and then we have the preview for next episode where we have thanksgiving with cody and robin's sad ass family and then we have okay but what? So is this Thanksgiving 2022, which is the Thanksgiving <laughs> yeah. they were arguing about last year, which is a Thanksgiving we kind of already saw, though, because we right. had Janelle and Christine getting the Airbnb. Like, is, I think so. are we just doing the same Thanksgiving that we already did? Yeah. It would be one thing if it was Thanksgiving 2023. That's no. still a year. It's OK. I'm sorry. It's 2022, right. I think. Yeah. And then we have 
Robin, I guess she slept in the closet at Tony and McKelty's house. Such a martyr. Oh Such God. a saint. Such a good person for sleeping on the floor of the closet. Like um, Clayton's mom from 90 right. Day Fiance. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have um, Robin and Cody arguing outside in the snow arguing yeah about cody fixing his relationships with the kids because robin wants us to believe that she's telling him over and over again be a good dad if you have to camp out on their doorstep do so okay i don't believe it no why are we out in the snow also why yeah. can't we be in your house again yeah did we just clean out that one little space in the living room <laughs> one little section with that weird art like the john wayne oh stuff God, and the cowboy horrible. art and the custer of it all the assets nice. the assets yeah. that's right the investments <laughs> yes indeed god yeah that's it that's it that's all we've got for you it's all she wrote beatrice is there anything else that we want to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get up on out of here well if you love our podcast i don't know why but you should go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing you five star review well i don't know why they haven't done it yet oh i got it got give it. us more because of course they love it Someone left us a three-star review, but it was actually a, a five-star review. Mm -hmm. So please go change that. To was five it? Star. Yeah. I think they accidentally selected three, <laughs> but they wrote a, like a paragraph about how amazing we were. Okay. So please change it back to five. It's not that woman who complained that you said eat the box too much? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you always get to bring up eating the box? It's so gross. Because I like to get my box eight, bitch. Yeah, because you have a resident lesbian over here <laughs> and she likes to make fun of me for She's it. She's an expert of eating boxes. <laughs> um, but yes, Jesus. please do leave us a review. It actually Thank really you. does help the pod. And most of our listeners actually listen to us yeah. on the podcast, not on YouTube. Yeah, but so YouTube, don't forget, review. like, comment, share, subscribe. It really does help. And we will be back later this week to talk about mom talk and also, girl, welcome Plattville. to, welcome oh my to, God. Oh, I'm, I'm, so sick of it. I'm gonna try and have a good attitude though. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna Are have you? a good attitude okay. about it. So make sure to come back and join us. And until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.